What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to dyno test our 8000 RPM 363 cubic inch small block Ford. In part one and two of this build series, you guys watched me assemble the short block and then the long block and valve train of this 363 Ford. We are now on the dyno with her. Now, these are dyno valve covers. We don't run the engines with the customer's real valve covers just in case they get scratched or dirty while we're working and tuning on the engine. But to recap on the build, if you're new to the channel, this uses a Dart SHP 8.2 deck engine block with a 4.125 bore. The base of the engine uses our Smetting 4340 forged fully internally balanced crankshaft with a 3.4 stroke. 4.125 bore with a 3.4 stroke gets us 363 cubic inch. This is an 8.2 deck engine, so externally it's exactly the same as a 289 or a 302 Ford. For connecting rods, we're running an H-beam 4340. It's a 5.4 inch long rod with ARP 2000 hardware. On top of that, we're running a JE forged piston. And this engine is going to California, so we optioned it to be right around 10.35 to one compression so that it can safely run with California's premium fuel. The brains of the operation is a solid street roller comp cams camshaft. It's a billet steel core with a melanized iron distributor gear so we can run a standard steel distributor gear and not have to worry about bronze or composite but we still get the advantages of the billet steel core which allows us to run heavier valve springs to support the valve train as this engine approaches 8000 rpm the cam specs on this engine is 252 260 duration at 50 with valve lift coming in right at 700 it is a solid roller engine so we are running a crower link bar lifter with high pressure pin oiling as well as a Jessel Sportsman aluminum shaft rocker system. Induction is going to be handled by a set of AFR 220 cc cylinder heads and their matching AFR single plane intake manifold. I'm running a 1 and 7 8 primary stepped to 2 inch flowing out of our 3 and a half inch exhaust system. So because this is a solid roller engine, I'm going to let it warm all the way up to full operating temperature. I'm going to make sure the idle tune-up is correct, make sure the carburetor is firing awesome, make sure the distributor timing is set. And then once the engine's fully warmed up, we'll pop off the valve covers. We'll relash our rocker arms before we continue any further, make sure they are in spec. Um, this cam card calls for 16 intake lash and 18 exhaust lash. So that's how we're going to set it up. And then once everything is perfect, then we can start checking our drivability tune up, give it some RPM and make sure things are looking awesome. The engine is fully warmed up and at operating temperature, so I'm going to shut it down, pull the valve covers off, and run the valve train. The valve train is now hot lashed on this motor and we are ready to carry on. 
So when it was cold in part two of this video series, I lashed, I took 10 thou off the hot lash to get me a baseline. That worked perfect for almost all of my intakes. However, all of my exhausts were still a couple thou tight. So next time, 10 thou on the intake and then probably 12 thou on the exhaust um, for your cold lash. But anyways, here's a pretty cool shot showing you that valve train. And you can see how all the rocker arms are tied to one shaft. Super cool. So I'm gonna put the valve covers back on this motor and we'll get it fired back up. Okay, motor's back together, valve covers are back on. I'm gonna check my total timing first and then we'll do some light pulls from maybe three to 6,000 RPM before we really let it stretch its legs and go to 8,000. to 6,000 RPM looks really promising for this thing to really make some good power up top. So I'm going to go ahead and drain the oil out of it and we're going to change to a VR1 10W30 and we will stretch its legs a little bit further and see what it does. Okay we did a quick oil change. We pulled out the break-in oil and have now poured in some Valvoline VR1 1030. Because this engine is going to turn a lot more RPM than our normal hydraulic roller street motors, I want to go ahead and dyno it with a race oil that has a lot of good anti-foaming properties so that at really high RPM we maintain really strong oil pressure. So we just finished topping it off, now we're going to fire it back up and make some noise. These headers are brand new so they come with a sort of black paint on them for rust prevention. So you'll see a little bit of smoke blowing or wisping off of them but it's just the paint, it's not the engine. Before I show you guys the numbers, remember this motor is going to California and it needs to run on California pump gas so the compression is very low for this much camshaft and what the customer wants to do with this engine. His big goal was basically to say I have an 8000 RPM small block Ford that still has somewhat decent street manners. Um, so normally with this much camshaft and this much RPM we would need to put around 12 and a half, 12 to 12 and a half to 1 compression. Um, to really give us the torque curve to match this camshaft. But those last two pulls, the first one I turned at 6,500 RPM and then I stretched its legs to 7,000 RPM and the torque curve just looks phenomenal. So you can see this is our 4,500 to 7,000 RPM pool. Comes up on the camshaft, carries the curve super nicely and we are just starting to flatten out at 7,000 RPM. I also only have 20, I'm sorry, I also currently have 30 degrees of timing in it. So before we pull it any farther into the RPM curve, I'm going to go ahead and adjust the timing and maybe a little extra timing with this lower compression will help carry the torque curve further. But at 7,000 RPM, we're just starting to go flat, so this motor will easily carry its curve to 8,000 RPM and sound pretty sweet. So on this next pool, I'm going to do the same RPM range, but add two more degrees of timing.
The red line of this curve is the 32 degrees, the blue line is 30 degrees. So with our little bit less compression than we normally run and a whole lot more camshaft, the extra timing has helped fill up the void and cylinder pressure that the compression isn't there to provide. So I'm gonna go ahead and try 34 degrees as well and we'll keep adding timing until we see this curve stop gaining. So if I add 34 degrees and it picks up another 10 horsepower across, across the curve, we know we're headed in the right direction. If I add 34 degrees and the curve repeats, meaning it doesn't pick up or lose anything, we know that extra timing didn't help us, so let's go ahead and pull it back out and stay with the 32. Okay, looking at our curves here, the blue curve is 32 degrees and the red curve is 34 degrees. And you can see that while we did make a tiny bit more, like, I mean, maybe one or two horsepower, I don't think that quantifies the added timing. So I'm going to go ahead and back it back down to 32 degrees and then we'll move to our fuel curve and see how it is performing. currently have an average AFR ratio of 12.4 to 1, which I'm super happy with. You're not going to gain much of anything going from 12.4 to 12.5, so we're going to leave it there. On this next pool, I'm going to stretch its legs to 7,600 RPM as we sneak up to that 8,000 RPM number. Alright guys, there's our curve going to 7,600 RPM. Again, everyone here in the shop agrees with this much camshaft, this much cylinder head, this much intake manifold, this thing should really have a lot more compression. But, you know, 8,000 RPM on the street, California pump gas, that is not too bad. So on this next pull, I'm going to go ahead and stretch its legs all the way to that magic 8,000 RPM number. There we go, 8,000 RPM, small block Ford on the dyno. Power curve just laid over super nice and flat. The camshaft is honestly pretty freaking perfect for this combo. Oil pressure was good, AFRs, we had an average on that pool of about 12.3 to one. So I'm super happy with that. That is so cool. Okay, we're done on the engine dyno with this guy. I did a thorough inspection. It's got no oil leaks. Everything is just running perfect. So now it's time to get the motor off. We'll put it in a crate and I'll see you guys in just a second. Here's the final product, all detailed, looking super nice and shiny. 
freaking awesome. Crazy to think that that little itty bitty 302 Ford based engine can turn 8,000 RPM and make almost 600 horsepower and run any pump gas in the country, anytime, anywhere. Thank you guys for watching this video. In next week's video, we're going to start building a 427 cubic inch all aluminum LS blower engine. See y'all then.